Hey, it's Cameron, and this is another episode of Fighting for the Final Marriage. And so, well, I'm pretty sure you saw I had a video already, so this is my video. This is my story, I guess you could say. This is how I came to know Christ, and, and thus, in turn, came to know or came to meet Hannah. I really just hope that you're able to get something out of this video, maybe something that I do or something that I did um, is where you are now, or if you can really relate to the situation. Um, just like, I hope you really were able to be edified by Hannah's video as well, because um, that video is amazing. Yeah, without no further ado, this is my story, or how I got to be here. I grew up in a church going household, excuse me. My dad was a preacher. So we went to church every Sunday. We went to Bible study um, regularly. I was introduced to like, sex early um i would probably say maybe preschool i was introduced to it and i was no i wasn't molested or raped or anything but i was just i just knew about it way too early i knew about you know what sex was um and just was very in introduced to it and very intrigued by it by it at a very very young age and so that seed um was planted when i was again maybe in preschool and it just continued to grow um, unbeknownst to me, you know, it was kind of under the surface for a long time. It was under the surface, and it really wasn't even something that played in my mind. Uh, there was a couple, in there, a couple incidents, you know, throughout my childhood um, that helped build on that seed, um, but it wasn't anything like drastic. Um, it wasn't anything like life changing or life altering, but you know, it did play on that seed and that seed was continued to be continued to be watered by little small situations throughout my life. Um, but that didn't even like really spring up and come to fruition until like college. I was also introduced to um, introduced to alcohol at an early age as well. Um, my first drink happened to come when I was like 16. I had went to a party and and I just started drinking and I liked it and I continued to drink and that's another seed that was really planted in me and just really continued to develop, really continued to grow, kind of spiraled out of control um, again in college. Um, and so I guess leading up to college, my first sexual encounter was, um, I would have to say middle school, going into high school, so ninth grade, going into my ninth grade year, um, I received and gave oral um, sex for the first time and then it wasn't really something that I craved it was really something that I liked it was just something new something that I was intrigued by something that you know it's like this is cool so let's try it and so you know that that seed just continues to build and build and build and so in high school I really wasn't doing anything really all throughout grade school I wasn't really doing much um, I played sports that's what my heart was that's, that was my love football was my love and I played other sports around it just to keep me in shape for football, but my heart and my soul longed and beat it for football. Like, if it wasn't football, I really didn't care. So, you know, throughout high school, I began to, you know, play around, uh, or get to fill out my surroundings or fill out my myself as, as it pertains to um, starting to really talk to girls, really to really getting involved with girls. I think I lost my virginity when I was maybe 17. So like the end of my junior year, I lost my virginity. Like from there, it still wasn't even a thing that just ran wild or ran rampant. Um, I would say what broke for me was that I really kind of made football my God. Um, that was all I really lived and breathed for. And I wanted, I wanted so badly to play in college. I wanted so badly to, to just live that life. But that's what I really wanted. Um, I knew I wasn't going to a big D1 school. I knew that if I played, it was probably going to be a D2 or D3 school, but I was fine with it. I just wanted to play football. Like that was my God. I made football my God. And football was like, for, for me, football was over everything. And so when I lost that opportunity, I had one opportunity to go play up north um, for the school called Mount Union, but that fell through. They don't give athletic, they don't give athletic scholarships. So I, was gonna, I wasn't going to have enough money in order to go up there and play. And so, once that broke, like once that fell through, like I kind of was depressed a little. Like I really wasn't depressed, but I began to find, my, try to find myself in different things. So I found myself in 
talking to girls, I found myself in, you know, drinking more, you know, hanging out late and doing all these other stupid things. Um, I really got that summer, man, that was the craziest summer for me. Or well, not really, that was the beginning of my craziness. Um, I started to hang out late, you know, going to different parties, coming back in the house around like seven, eight o'clock in the morning. Um, uh, started um, that's when my drinking really got started to get bad. Um, remember that summer, all I did was lift and you know just try to have fun. So I would go to the gym, lift weights, trying to prepare in order to you know try out for the football team here at West Georgia when I got here. And so I'm I'm lifting, I'm lifting, I'm lifting, I'm lifting, and uh, I go to try out and I don't make the team. I didn't even get a call back to like tell me why. I didn't make the team, what happened, what they were looking for, what I could have did better, nothing. And so that really like sent me into a state of depression, kind of like I was in my room literally for two weeks. I didn't want to come out, I didn't go to the gym. I didn't, I barely ate, I really didn't do nothing. I was really just like, you know, I don't know what else to do from here. Um, but then I slowly like kind of pulled myself out of that. Not really, I kind of pulled myself back to being normal, back to like going back to the gym and you know, just being social and stuff. And so I get here my freshman year, and my first semester was really smooth. I really didn't do much. I was still in that kind of depressed state, or you know, just trying to find myself. So what I would do, I would go to class, go to the gym, eat, come home, do my homework. That's it. That was my life for a good minute, and then again I started to experiment. You know, alcohol and women was my drugs of choice. And freshman year again, it wasn't bad. Um, second semester when it started to get bad, I started to drink like every weekend. I started to, you know, really start to pursue women in a harder way, and it was just really started to boil over and continue to progress like that. And so I would say. I got many warnings from God to like chill out, but I wasn't with it. Like I was just trying to do my own thing. So I remember, this it's is crazy, but I remember one night um, I had that sleep paralysis like three times back to that. The first time it wasn't bad. And so I got up and like, I'm shaking, I'm shook, but I get up and I'm like, okay, I gotta go back to sleep. I go back to sleep and it hits again. And I get back up and I'm like, okay, what is this? Like I gotta do something to get this off of me. And I, I'm like, alright, whatever. But I get myself back to sleep. And the third time it came, and I go back to sleep, it comes back a third time. And that third time it came so hard, and like, I didn't know what to do. And I was just completely terrified of what was going on. Like, I didn't know what was going on in my life. I didn't know if I was going to live past that night. I was just really scared. So I called my dad, you know, thank, thank God for parents who, you know, pray, who are there for you, and all that. All that. Uh, so I called my dad, and, you know, he, prays with me, he gives me a scripture to read and tells me to um, just turn my TV on the TV in. That way I feel like more comfortable going back to sleep. So I do all of that and go to sleep and I'm fine, but I still don't listen. And so I'm still turning up every weekend. I'm still uh, drinking every weekend, you know, doing all this crazy stuff. And so I'm drinking and I almost get arrested, but I didn't. So we were having a kick back in my room, in the dorm. And like, I didn't even want to be in the room while it was going on. So I'm telling my roommate like, bruh, it's too loud in there. Something bad finna go down. But then he, he grilled me and he's like, bruh, come on. Come on, bruh, come on. So all right, whatever. I come in, I take one shot. And probably like five minutes of me being in that room. The R knocks on the door and it's basically trying to get everybody, trying to get the police to come in. So we, scrambling trying to like hide stuff the police come in and search they don't find nothing by the grace of god they don't find anything um then we get breathalyzed and again they don't find it they like, they, they gave people who blew anything over 0 0.00 citations i blew a 0 0.00 and like that was the only night where i could say i really only took one shot when we was doing anything in the room so like again that's nothing but the grace of god that i dodged another bullet so that's two warnings already that i completely ignored and just want to do my own thing and so over that summer again uh things just continue to continue in this snowball effect it's crazy as like how left my mom went from i was this really manageable child all throughout grade school and then to this wild you know turning up drinking staying out late doing whatever the heck i want to do person like a year later and it's crazy because i don't know how i got there i just know that the seed of a seed of um, sexual, that sexual seed that was planted like 
in preschool and I see the alcoholism that was planted at like 16 just continue to grow, continue to grow rampant in my life. But, you know, just being sexually immoral, drinking every weekend and things were just going completely left. I was completely losing my mind. I didn't care where I was. I had lost my moral compass of God, who God was to me and what, what I meant to him. And I was just in this deep, dark place uh, that stemmed from that depression of not playing football. Because when you place anything over God, and like once that thing's removed, you really don't know who you are. So I placed football over God, and once football was removed from me, I didn't know who I was. And so I was finding anything to cope with it. And so my sophomore year, I'm still acting crazy. I'm still doing what I want to do. But um, I'm in a different dorm hall, and you know we're still partying and turning up, doing what the heck we want to do. And I see, like, it was a series of times where I was just like, man, I need to stop drinking. I need to stop, you know, stop drinking. I had started smoking. I wasn't smoking a lot, but I need to stop drinking. I need to stop smoking. I was like, I need to stop. Um, it's just not for me. It's not even fun for me. I don't even know why I do it. Um, it's just the thrill of the moment, I guess. And so a couple of times I tried to separate myself and it didn't work. I would always come right back to it. But this one time, I'll never forget, I was drinking in my friend's room, we're getting drunk, and I black out. The next thing I know, I'm, I wake up in the hallway, um, like, where, I'm, where I am, where am I, how did I get here, and why was nobody, like, you know, looking after me? You know, I'm constantly looking after people, constantly making sure people are safe, and the one time I need somebody to make sure I'm safe, nobody's around. Initially, I was mad at the people around me, but then the more... I thought about it no more. I began to get, be mad at myself for even letting myself get to that point, um, letting myself get that low. And so I began to separate myself. And at this moment, I'm clearly being separated by God, but I don't even I don't even have enough of a relationship with God to know that I'm being separated by God from the, from these people. And so I, I I separate myself. I isolate myself. And I'm just like I gotta find something different. And then at that same time is when I really begin to be close with. Hannah, um, I would just go over there, we would sit, we would talk. That was really like my getaway from the craziness that I really had going on. That was my getaway from the alcoholism. That was my getaway from the sex. That was my getaway from the anything that was just bothering me, that was just left. That was my getaway from it. I would just go sit and talk with her because it was a very pure relationship. And for some reason, I just felt like I could talk to her and, um, just sit and do my homework and not feel pressured to drink, not feel pressured to, you know, smoke or do whatever the heck the crowd was doing that day. And so, you know, I'm beginning to be separated by God and I still don't even know it. I'm just getting separated. And so I continue to separate myself and just continue to like, you know, whatever, I'm just do me. And then I go to a, a BCF Bible study and they were telling their testimony because they was coming back from a conference and I just felt God so heavy in that room that I had no choice but to, you know, surrender my life to God. And like, once you feel like, once you feel the presence of God, there's no denying it. And so I had to just like surrender. I was in that room crying, just crying out to God. And I didn't know why, I didn't know how, but one thing I can say is once I gave my life to Christ, because I ran from him so long and so hard, he came in so rampant, like he came in flipping over stuff, turning tables over, like knocking down stuff. He came in rampant, like my life was changed in a matter of months of like what I used to do and what I didn't want to do anymore. I had stopped drinking like cold, I stopped hanging out, um, going to parties and doing like little kickbacks and stuff, cold, like I just, can, I just stopped. Cause it was so many times throughout my life where God just shielded me from so many things that I didn't even realize he was shielding me from. Um, I used to work security and like it was one night where I was just like, I really don't feel like going. And that same night that I said, I don't feel like going, they ended up shooting at the club that I was supposed to be working security at. And I didn't even see that as a sign of God telling me to wake up. I was just like, you know, whatever, I dodged one. I was isolated from my friends for a long time. Um, there's nothing against them, there's nothing against anybody who I ever used to hang out with. It's just I couldn't hang out with that, those people anymore because God was just pulling me so strong that I couldn't stay in that place that I was. God was pulling me so hard that I couldn't just be where I was. Um, and man, I don't know how I got here. Like, like even going over this, like this little timeline I just went through for you, I really don't even know how I got here. Like, 
when I tell you God came in and just flipped over my entire life and turned my life completely upside down once I completely surrendered to him it's so crazy he kept knocking he kept knocking he kept like just knocking at my door just showing me signs that he loved me that he cared that he was there that despite you know how hurt I was feeling inside that he was still there for me and so he just continued to knock continue to knock continue to knock and I continued to ignore him but once I finally let this man in once I finally let God in and let him be a father and a friend and a and my God, he really destroyed my life in the best way ever. Like every false idol I had, every um, sin that I was trapped to, he completely wiped it clean. The only thing that took time for me to completely get over was my love, my complete love for women and sex. Because, because it was introduced to me so young, it was a really deep root that really took some time for him to go in and yank out but by the grace of God he did and by, the, by me being obedient to him he did like it would be times where I was just like I don't even want to do this I remember one one night the whole entire walk to my car and drive there I was fighting myself it was really a battle within myself trying to stop and turn around and go back to my room it was just a it was a complete fight complete battle uh, to really get over that, it really took a lot of time and it's something that uh, is still roots that he's taking up now. Um, I'm not doing that anymore, but it's still roots of it that he has and he's going out, he's going in and like pulling it up and healing um, old wounds and just really remaking me. Like I met Hannah midway through God, you know, changing me and making me into what he called me to be. And so, throughout that process, um, I think the junior year, uh, summer going into my junior year, he began to tell me like, no, this is your wife, or this is who I designed for you to be with. And so I'm like, yeah, okay. And I'm not really paying attention to it because I really just want to keep that platonic. It's like, this is the one friendship that I have with a female who I didn't try to pursue, who they weren't trying to pursue me. And we just really had this understanding that, okay, we here, we just friends, we just cool. And that was something that I needed at the time because I was still in a place of trying to come out of that. So I needed somebody that was just there who can listen to me and, you know, be a be honey with me. And that was her. And so when he telling me that, I'm like, uh, I don't really, I really want to hear that. But um, plus, I was still, you know, trying to get up, trying to end the relationship that I was already in. Um, but, you know, praise God that he, He's he's a good he's a good father and he he really has a plan for you a plan of prosper you and so he did take me out of that he did clean that up for me he did turn that around for me man and he really opened my eyes up to Hannah um, opened my eyes up to who she was and what she was to me and so you know I really just hope you're able to get something out of this um, I really hope that you are able to. Maybe even see yourself through that story. Maybe see yourself through what I just explained that I went through. Maybe you're even there now, but if you are there, um, there is hope, there is a light at the end of the tunnel. You know, there is liberty, there is freedom in Christ, man. And you can be free too. Um, if you can take somebody as dirty as I am, as dirty as I still am, as filthy as I am, and as much as I ignored him and didn't want to be saved by him, and completely changed my mindset and flipped me around. I think it's the same for you, man. He really loves all his children. And he's there knocking at your door. He's there giving you constant reminders that he loves you and that he wants to spend time with you. You just gotta open up your eyes and see it, man. Yeah, but please don't think that this is just all roses. I've been perfect all my life for that, you know. I'm just this perfect character, man. I got flaws, I got character traits, I got. <sighs> Sins that are deeply rooted in me, just like anybody else, and it takes it takes God to get those things out of you. It takes God to fill those voids that you fill with anything else to remove that and put something else in. But He will do it, man. He loves you and He's there for you, and He really cares for you, man. You just gotta give Him you gotta give Him a chance. We give everything else in life a chance. We give school, we give women, we give drugs, we give whatever we give everything else a chance but we never give god a chance and by god i mean jesus christ we never give him a chance but give him a chance and see what he can do to your life man see where he can bring you from and see the plans that he has for your life how he can change your situation in a year's time and i promise you i'll never want to go back to anything else about a year some change free of my whole life and 
Yeah, man. God is just so faithful. He really cares about you. And he'll change your life for you, man. And so, I just really hope y'all got something from this again, man. If this video spoke to you, man, please like, please share, please subscribe. If you don't, you know, praise God. You know, we don't care. We just, we're just doing what God tells us to do. And hopefully it speaks to you. Love y'all. See y'all in the next video. Peace.